Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, a new off-grid knife in my collection. Uh, some stupid fool hacks Spartan Blades Instagram. We talk about that for a second. And then what we really dig into are the top 10 folders in my collection with ideal blade to handle ratios. I'm always kind of going off about how, uh, well, aesthetics, looks, etc., are important to me uh, when it comes to knives. And uh, and they are. But the oh, problem I'm running into is that um, sometimes the most useful knives have kind of crappy handle to blade ratios. Okay, so in this case, what we're talking about is visual. We'll get into all of that uh, in just a second. But first, it's my first opportunity of the day of the week to show off a knife. And what I'm carrying today happens to be an off-grid knife. This is not the new one in the collection that's going to be mentioned during the state of the collection, uh, but it just so happens to fit in today's category of ideal handle to blade ratios. This one just missed the pick the lineup here uh, only because there are some knives that have been with me longer, that I've been more observant of their good handle to blade ratios uh, that needed to be in that list as a, uh, instead of this. But this is, and this is what I'm pocketing today, the Scorpion by Off Grid Knives. This is part of their Elite series. Uh, most of their most of their knives are, you know, designed by Kerry uh, Orifice in California and made by Best Tech Knives. But a couple of them in this uh, Scorpion series, like this one you see here, are uh, are expertly manufactured by Wee Knives. Just really, really nice knives. This one has always reminded me a little bit of the SOCOM Elite in its angularity, kind of in the shape of its handle, uh, sort of in the shape of its blade a little bit with this uh, sort of uh, reverse dip here for you to put your, your thumb into on the backside of the jimping and the thumb ramp. Little details about this have, al have always reminded me of the, uh, of the SOCOM Elite. Uh, very different feel, very different knife, but uh, an excellent, excellent cutter, very robust build. This is, uh, these are titanium slabs with inlaid carbon fiber, and they are not milled out for uh, weight reduction on the inside. So it has that feel, that sort of solid, solid feel. Uh, this is an excellent fidget knife, if that's your thing, because that blade is almost four inches long, and with a four inch blade, you know, you're gonna get you're gonna you have the weight of that blade rocketing, uh, rocketing it out, especially if it's on bearings, which this is. I do like that sort of clip point blade. Um, reminds me maybe a little bit, tiny bit of the uh, of the 940, just a touch. Um, so just a great knife all around. And um, if you're not familiar with them, or if you're not following them on Instagram, you should. Uh, they just released a version of this knife, a couple of versions of this knife with these beautiful inlays. I mean, you know, whenever you have pockets for inlays sort of baked into the recipe, you can go ad nauseum with different versions of the knife, just putting different beautiful things inlaid in there. I think I saw wood, like some sort of gorgeous swirly wood in there. I mean, that's that's a nice combination. They're also doing uh, something or marbled carbon fiber, but also with the blade, they're now starting to coat it in different, uh, you know, with the flats black and the and the uh, bevels satin or reverse reversing that. So they're doing some cool stuff with this knife and having we uh, on the roster for building it, uh, you know that they can do a lot of interesting things with this knife and uh, have it always be, you know, top quality, high quality, first class, always first class. All right, uh, second uh, of carry today is just in case I had to pull it out to use it in front of people is because the scorpion is pretty large knife. Uh, but I've been carrying the bug out today. I haven't carried this in a while. Uh, my Benchmade bug out, I think I misspelled it. Sorry about that, uh, is a, a perennial favorite here because it's light and thin. And um, I have it, I have it all set up the way I like it. I have these Allen Putnam micarta scales on there with that Anzo pattern that's just so pleasing to the hand. 
Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. So pleasing to the hand. And these have patinaed nicely. You can see on the peaks of the, uh, you can see on the ridges of, <laughs> of those valleys or whatever you want to call them, uh, that they're very dark. And on the, on the edges, it's very dark where, where the micarta has soaked up my hand filth. <laughs> and uh, so I really like that. It has a really nice warm feel, uh, way better than the, than the, standard original blue handles and now bug out i mean they are just going they're going they're bugging out with the bug out man they're just a, a million different handles out there that you can get uh both as exclusives and as things coming out of the benchmade factory so i applaud them for that that's good thinking because i mean it's obviously a winner i think this is the mini griptilian killer if there is such a thing this is it uh, also, you'll notice I have my anodized blue to match the other blue anodized uh, material here. I have my um, Snaggletooth MF. Uh, so Snaggletooth Tactical is a, a company that uh, out of the United States that makes different uh, accessories for folding knives. And they started with these uh, these sort of pocket deployers. That's what I'm calling them, pocket deployers. Uh, similar to the Emerson Wave or other um, pocket deployers where you pull it out and you snag a part of the blade near the tang on the seam of your pants and it automatically, and it just opens it. Um, this aftermarket thing, great, great idea. Um, he started making them for, you know, most knives with removable thumb studs, but especially cold steel. He was really focused on cold steel knives. Um, and if you're carrying a cold steel knife, it, it's not crazy to think that maybe you would want a uh, a pocket deployer on it. Half the cold steel folders already have them in the form of the thumb plate. Uh, so I think it was a great idea. I think it works great on this little bug out. This knife lives the winter on the in the inside um, breast pocket of whatever my winter jacket is. So um, it's nice to have a way to sort of deploy it as you pull it out in case you ever need it for <laughs> emergencies or just to look cool, you know. Uh, it's not infrequently that I need to look cool for one reason or another, and oftentimes that means deploying a knife. Uh, so Benchmade Bug Out is what I have today, uh, riding side saddle, or no, I should say, uh, riding shotgun with the old, uh, with the off-grid knives, Scorpion. Uh, I, I dig both of these knives, and both of them have gotten, uh, have been shelved recently for one reason or another. I've just been gravitating towards other knives. So today it's like a little mini reunion, and it warms the cockles of my heart. Uh, check out Instagram. Check out my Instagram feed because I've been posting pictures of my EDC interspersed with audiograms. Audiograms, little one minute teasers from the interview show that comes out on Sunday. Um, so uh, I am I I am in uh, in in a in a phase of Instagram fertility for me. I see some guys like uh, our good friend Edwin or or Bastian Cove. Oh man, they post like ten times a day, and um, well, I aspire to that. Uh, but for right now, uh, definitely go check out our Instagram. It is a good uh, it's a good feed to follow, uh, just to keep up with the podcast, but also to get a little eye candy. Because let's face it. Uh, I'm not just uh, dumping my pockets on the table. I'm I'm very, I'm making tableaus of the stuff that I have on me. So check it out. Uh, coming up tomorrow night right here on the Knife Junkie channel and uh, also on Twitch and on Facebook, incidentally, uh, at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live. It's Thursday Night Knives. Uh, it's our Thursday, uh, it's our weekly live stream. Love the show. And Tomorrow night is the third Thursday of the month, which means that uh, it's giveaway time on Thursday Night Knives. And this is for Gentleman Junkies. Uh, if you didn't know, we have a little Patreon account. Three tiers of support. The top tier is a Gentleman Junkie. We have a Tactical Junkie uh, at $5. And at $3, we have the Traditional Junkie, where, well, part of being a Gentleman Junkie at the $10 level means you're entered into the monthly knife drawing. And this month, we have this really cool Acta Non Verba Z300. Acta Non Verba, a knife company out of the Czech Republic 
that has exploded onto the scene with a number of really compelling designs. Uh, I love, there's this one recurve kind of tactical tracker style fixed blade that they make that I tried to explain a couple of weeks back in painful fashion. I love that knife. Uh, their folders are really cool. They have a very um, sort of modern look to me, um, not just in the knife designs themselves, but in how they present them in the packaging, in their logo, uh, you know, all of that. So uh, uh, act and non verba, actions, not words. Uh, meaning go out there and do deeds, don't just talk about them. And while you're doing those deeds, do them with this knife, uh, others from the same stable, or at least have them in your pocket. Uh, the Z300 is a flipper, as you can see, and uh, it's on nylon. I think it's on nylon. Hang on one sec. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. We did this before. It's on nylon washers. It has incredibly smooth action. Uh, you know, you think nylon, you think of old ladies' pants from the 80s. But nylon can be a really, really good um, washer material. Uh, you, you see it in uh, uh, as, as half of the recipe in a lot of cold steels. You see it in Emerson's. You see it in uh, uh, hinderer knives. Um, Nylon washers can be great, and in this case, they are. I mean, the action on this is awesome. I love great action on non-bearing knives because it, it feels almost like it's tuned even better. It doesn't have the benefit of these rolling balls uh, to get the blade out. It's, uh, it's more measurement and engineering, and they do a great job. So a uh, couple of things about this that I keep talking about is how shark-like it is. You look at it, the whole, the blade itself uh, looks like the front, uh, you know, the business end of a Mako shark, as, uh, as, someone, as someone recently put a fine point on. Yes, it does look like a Mako shark. The flipper tab looks like a pectoral fin, not only in, in, in scale kind of, but in shape. And by the way, that thing has a little loom dot at the end of it, which is kind of cool. Uh, but then the shape of this really nicely milled G10 handle um, looks kind of like the protruding belly of a great white shark as it sort of cruises past you. Um, excellent deep carry pocket clip. I mean, more than deep carry. And then something I was looking at today. Let me show you this with it closed. Look at the look at the. Uh, I hope it comes through here. I want you to. Look at the tolerance between the tip of the blade and that last standoff. Let's see if I can make that happen here. It's just, you know, within a millimeter of slamming that tip into this giant, uh, giant pylon at the end of the blade, but uh, at the end of the handle, but it doesn't, it's really, really well engineered. So anyway, uh, I think I just waxed poetic about this knife, but this is the, uh, this is the September 2021 Gentleman uh, Junkie giveaway knife uh, coming up September 16th. That's tomorrow night, Thursday, on Thursday Night Knives. Right here. Uh, if you think what we do here is valuable and cool and uh, you enjoy the conversation, you enjoy the um, the knives, the visuals, the guests, uh, that, that to me is the greatest part about this channel are the guests we have on the show because <laughs> they're the ones who know what they're talking about. And uh, maybe I can, over the course of an hour, coax some of that good stuff out. So if you like what we do here and you think it's valuable and, and you can add some support to the show on a monthly basis, check us out on Patreon. Uh, you know, like I mentioned before, three levels of support, traditional junkie at three a month. Tactical Junkie at five a month and Gentleman Junkie at 10 a month. And uh, also, by the way, we've started posting um, uh, exclusives, exclusives. So after the interviews are done, after I'm done recording these interviews, uh, Jim will roll again and we'll get 10 to 20 minutes of after chat where uh, because some of the best conversations we've had have been after we've stopped rolling. So uh, I wanted to capture some, some of that and also give it as a thanks uh, to patrons um, so there you have it. There's my pitch. Please go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon uh, to check us out on Patreon. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon.
Today's podcast is brought to you in part by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash knife junkie. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Again, that's www.audibletrial.com forward slash knife junkie. I am very, very glad uh, to say that you can also listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and a host of others. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a bunch of them on my phone so that I can check the feed each week. You know, a while back we had a lot of RSS feed issues, which Jim and his big brain figured out. Thank you, Jim. And now, uh, so for months now, we've been back up on all the uh, audio podcast uh, catchers. So, uh, you know, I have a bunch of them on my phone just to make sure it's still happening. So please check us out there. Uh, if you're mowing the lawn, washing the dishes, uh, taking the kids to school, um, you know, because this is their real education. This is what they really need to find out about. I will stop right there and say that I'm really glad I'm not in a traditional knife phase right now. I feel it circling back with fall, with the changing of the leaves, because I looked out this morning and it's only, uh, you know, we're only halfway into September and I saw a bunch of leaves in my backyard and I started thinking, what's it going to be like raking with a dog? And what I mean by that is we let the dog out in the back and once a week I go around and clean, clean up what he does. But now there are going to be leaves involved. How am I going to see it? This is going to be, I'm not, I'm going to have to figure this out. In any case, uh, I am not in a traditional knife phase. I feel myself circling back just as Great Eastern Cutlery announces their final summertime release. They've been, uh, They've had a couple of this year, and uh, to me, that's exciting because uh, it means they're still kind of keeping up, even though they're not keeping up with demand, because how could they? People love them, and they love them for their exclusivity. They love them for their designs and their well-built, uh, you know, these well-built knives, but they wouldn't be happening in another way, and they can only happen in this sort of slow, arduous, hundred-year-old process way. So... They came out with their final <laughs> knife of the summer. It's the GEC 86, the 86. Now I have one here on the knife cam. This is an 86 uh, from their last run of them, the oil field jack. This one, uh, as you can see, is in, is, is in a beautiful autumn jig bone. And it's got the uh, that gorgeous big clip point blade and that giant uh, sheep's foot. Uh, but the new 86 is the Angus jack. Yes, the Angus Jack. Sounds delicious. Uh, on the main blade of the Angus Jack, which is a large and quite robust sheep's foot blade, is a steer. It's funny to have a sheep's foot blade, but with a steer. Uh, it, um, not embossed. What do you call it? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the <laughs> what is it? The thing, the picture on the blade is a bull. And, uh, and then the secondary blade is a uh, by the book pen knife. But when I say by the book, I mean by the book Great Eastern Cutlery. No one makes a pen knife blade like Great Eastern Cutlery. Uh, oftentimes they're bigger than expected. And man, they are like the scalpel of the whole set. I always keep them very, very sharp. And I'm, I'm still talking about those little, uh, those little pen blades. I keep them very sharp and then I don't touch them, don't use them until I possibly need them. But I really like the pen blades. On some smaller case knives I've had, I feel like the pen blade is a throwaway. It's just a feature there to have a spring underneath to have that girth. Uh, here with the new G, uh, GEC 86 Angus Jack, you have their uh, traditional 1095 blade steel um, and this really cool looking shield. I, I'm not sure what they call that shape, uh, but it's uh, it's a, it's a it looks like a coat of arms here. And... Uh, a couple of different woods. What are they coming out with with the woods? I read this before, and now it escapes me because that's, well, that's kind of where I am. Um, oh, natural bone. Yes, we love that. Red and black linen micarta, OD green canvas micarta. Okay. All right. Oh, my gosh. This is the first time ever. I'm starting to feel a little bit eh, about micarta. Don't get me wrong. Love it. I love it. I will never stop loving you, micarta. But on a knife like this, man, I think I want 
more wood selections. And I'm looking at this picture here and it looks like they have Gabon ebony there and like Bacote or some, it looks like they have two different woods here. So maybe just the first release will be a smattering of, uh, of micartas and then a bone. And then maybe the second release will be with the woods. But I really like the way this knife looks with those woods in this picture here. So I don't know. Let me know what you think on the listener line, 724-466-4487. Uh, what is your favorite and what do you think is the most appropriate main blade on a uh, on a jackknife like this? Now, let's just, let's just talk technical for a sec. A jackknife, and now I know there are going to be people, perhaps Mike Latham, <laughs> people who might... Uh, have be able to put a, an even finer point on it and call me out on this. But how I always learned it was a jackknife is a knife with two blades and they come out of the same side like this. Uh, if you have a um, have them coming out of opposite sides, I think technically it's a pen blade, oddly enough, or a pen. Yeah. A, okay. A pen knife, not a pen blade, but a pen knife. And then if they're the same size and they come out of opposite sides, it's a moose. And then if they are the same size and come out of the same side, it's a jackknife uh, in a Skinner configuration, especially if it's got the spade blade. All right. So now we're going down a rabbit hole, but let's just all agree that a jackknife is a double bladed or, or multi bladed uh, uh, slip joint knife like this traditional style knife uh, where both blades come out of one end. All right, why did we go down this rabbit hole? What I was gonna say is I think that this jackknife, this G -E uh, GEC 86 Angus jackknife um, looks really great in this main blade sheep's foot. But I was asking you to leave a comment below or to call the listener line and let me know what you think the most appropriate main blade is. I kind of feel like the most appropriate and you can say, what do you even mean by appropriate? But something in my gut tells me that the best main blade is a clip point. Second best main blade is a um, spear point. Yeah, I know. I don't even like the way the sp most spear points look, but yes. And then the third most appropriate for the main blade, the large blade, is is this sheep's foot. I think the sheep's foot is an excellent blade and it has uh, an important role in the whole uh, setup, but I, I think it's a, better as a smaller blade. Am I nuts? Do I spend too much time thinking about this? Am I avoiding the important things in my life um, by by thinking this through and not thinking other things through? I don't know. Let me know on the listener line, 724-466-4487. Now, next, let's talk about a couple of Mama Lukes here. And I don't know if it's a couple or if it's more than that, but some fool, some someone took the Spartan Blades Instagram account hostage uh, it, it was a ransom attack, ransomware attack uh, on the Instagram page of Spartan, which is just weird to me. What? Why do you do that? And and then why do you go after people who are former snipers and make knives? Why wouldn't you go after, you know, uh, I don't know, easier prey? But in any case, uh, Spartan Blades wasn't having it. They said, no, sir. Here, you know what? I, I brought this Spartan Blade out just as a little bit of eye candy while I talk about this. Spartan Blades, in a, in, a, in a spirited way, said, no, sir, we are not going to pay your ransom on a couple of pictures of our cool knives on Instagram. We can take new pictures. We can uh, post the old pictures again, and we're just going to put it under Spartan Blades official. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're on a page that seems to be the Spartan Web's uh, <laughs> Spartan Blades uh, Instagram page, but it's not Spartan Blades official. You're looking at a pirate. You're uh, you're looking at something that isn't the real deal. They have changed things up uh, so that they're not going to give in to these scumbags who took them, who took them hostage, took them ransom, took them for ransom. They're just going to thumb their nose at them. Oh, look at that! I was talking about nylon washers. I think they have nylon washers right there, in the uh, in that upper upper right hand. Uh, though I'm not sure, so I'm I'm speaking out of school here. But uh, guys at Spartan, I like how you do business, and now I like it even better. Thumb your nose at these scumbags. Say we'll just change it to Spartan Blades official, and anything that doesn't say official on the end is just is just someone who likes our cool knives, or someone who wants to bilk us for cash. Look at this thing. This, of course, is a uh, a collaboration with the great and powerful Bill Harsey Jr. and uh, 
one of one of my favorite, most beautiful, beautiful knives in the collection. This uh, Spartan Harzy dagger. One nice sharp piece of S35 VN. I'm going to put that down and just say, people, mind your own business, okay? Do do your thing, uh, but but don't come into my my camp and don't don't get on uh, Spartan Blades Cloud and and try and rip off their work. Do your own work, man. Come up with your own stuff. I'm sure you're a complicated individual. I'm sure you have things to offer. Figure it out, okay? And leave the rest of us alone. All right, so still to come on the state of the collection, I'm going to show off a new off-grid knife, and then we're going to talk about the top 10 folders in my collection with ideal handle-to-blade ratios. Ever order a knife online and have it delivered to the office so your wife doesn't know? Chances are you're a knife junkie. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was talking about that. Uh, my dad mentioned about that. And he's like, you know, in the eighties, I used to have wine delivered to the office so that your mother wouldn't know. And then I'd, I'd wait till she was in the shower or doing something, uh, you know, she, <laughs> and I would sneak it in the house. I was like, very cool. I like knowing that it comes down through the generations. Not only that, but, uh, I like knowing that it's a universal, a good buddy at work is a fisherman. And, uh, he's the guy who gave me a fishing rod for my birthday. Thank you, sir. And uh, yeah, he's got to sneak his his fishing rods into the house. And actually, now the house has a security camera that gets poured over, and now it's even harder. So I don't know. He put, he has to tape them to his legs, <laughs> walk in that way. All right. So uh, let me show you a new knife I got. Now this is courtesy of Off Grid Knives. Thank you, Carrie. I I greatly appreciate this because I love this knife, and I love the um, the blade shape. And I actually have a version of this knife. So to receive this is now I have a, a little mini collection of this knife. Uh, this is the Off Grid Knives Back Country. And this is the Coyote version. All right. Uh, this is the Coyote version. So the back Off Grid Back Country Coyote. And as you can tell, it's Coyote because of the really the, the beautiful color of the Kydex and the handle. And then I know some people like this. Really, really great Kydex sheath. Um, there it is. It's a titanium nitrate coated um, D2 cryo, cryogenically treated D2 blade. Uh, gorgeous recurve. I mean, insanely sharp uh, recurve here. And um, I've mentioned this before. And so this is also what we do in my family, we repeat ourselves over and over and over. But uh, to me, the back country should be called the back alley because to me, it looks like a fighting knife. Uh, I, I am sure, you know, Kerry's an outdoorsman and uh, I'm sure he designed this for himself, you know, to be an outdoorsman with. But uh, Kerry, you also designed a very cool tactical uh, blade shape because uh, to me, this with that recurve and that center line point, um, with the with a massive swedge, basically it has a dagger cross section at the tip. Uh, this thing would make a great you know fighting knife if you needed it uh, for something like that. Uh, so the coyote version, this is the new release. Uh, I think the cryogenic treatment to the D2 is new on this particular blade. And then the texturing on the handle is new. The texturing on this blade handle is much like the texturing on the rapid fire. We did a giveaway of the rapid fire uh, not too long ago. Uh, the rapid fire, actually, if you look at it, has a handle shaped almost exactly like this and uh, has this sort of hexagonal honeycombed uh, milling as texture. And it's not only textured this way, but it's also contoured this way. So from, from, um, dorsal to pectoral side of the handle, it is also um, milled. So very, very comfortable in the handle, uh, in the hand. The handle is large. I got to say the handle is larger than uh, expected, but uh, well, it's not larger than expected. I already have the knife, but when you look at the, at the, at the width of the blade at its skinniest portion, my eye wants to see the handle get that skinny also for some reason. Uh, that's just my eye. It doesn't, but the the handle itself is extremely comfortable, very hand filling. Uh, I was mentioning the other night on Thursday Night Knives, it reminds me a bit of how, of the impression that the Buck 119, I should have pulled that out, uh, gives when I take it in hand. I'm, I'm always like, oh, that's that's a 
very substantial handle. Like probably doesn't need to be that substantial, but it feels good. That's kind of this right here. The only reason I would ever find that to be a concern is for weight. Uh, otherwise, it feels good. It feels good in hand. I've always talked about, uh, so let me compare this to the one I already have, and I'll tell you what I was, I'd, I'd always been thinking with this one. So this is the one my father got me. This is the off-grid uh, backcountry blackout. Uh, as you can tell, blackout refers to the black blade and the black G10 handle. Uh, this one is different. It's D2, but it doesn't say cryo. So I'm not sure if it's cryogenically treated, uh, but the real big difference in this blade is the hollow grind. It's nicely hollow ground. And that is in keeping with the rapid fire, the, uh, um, the folding version of this knife. Um, so both came out, I guess, at the same time. This is a, a first generation of this knife and uh, comes with the very, very sharp hollow grind here. Um, so very nice knife. Also, the um, the texture in the handle is different. This is more of an Anzo pattern where you get uh, where you get um, offset grooves coming in from the dorsal and pectoral side of the handle, uh, meeting in the middle in a sort of brick pattern, offset brick pattern. Really comfortable. Really like this. Um, and we we're trying to figure out on Thursday Night Knives uh, which texture is better. This sort of honeycomb texture or the Anzo texture. And really it's a matter of taste because you can pick them up and put them down, pick them up, put them down, and they both just stick in your hand. And of course you've got great jimping on this too. Uh, jimping here on the, on the um, thumb ramp and jimping here on the back. Now the jimping here on the back is to nestle into your, into your palm to, uh, to really get a good, to me, the best grip on this knife is saber grip. It does work in this, Filipino grip pretty nicely too. Anyway, all grips, it works. Uh, if you're interested in the off-grid knives, I've actually talked about two of them today because uh, my EDC is also this off-grid knife Scorpion. I just think they do cool stuff. They have a lot of uh, really, they have a lot of really compelling designs to me. And uh, you know, I'm a design guy. And uh, and they're made by Best Tech mostly, except for this one, which is made by Wii. So they're really awesomely built. So if you like the design, you can trust that they're well built. And uh, uh, we have an affiliate link, as you can see right down at the bottom of the screen, thenifejunkie.com slash offgrid. If you, um, if you buy an off-grid knife using that affiliate link, uh, they chip a little bit off for the Knife Junkie. So I don't know if you like anything here. Uh, <laughs> sounds like... Uh, sounds like a sales show, but it's not. I actually really love these things. Look, and now I have two of them, so I can do, you know, stuff that looks impressive. <laughs> anyway, that's the knife grid, uh, the off-grid knives, backcountry coyote, a new part of my collection, and now I have a mini sub-collection of backcountries. And yes, the sheaths work on one another. I'll put those edge facing away over here as I shot the sheaths onto the floor. And let's move on to the top 10 folders in my collection with what I consider ideal hand, uh, handle to blade ratio. Okay, so now let me, let, me, let me lay down a couple of rules as I like to do. I'm speaking visually. This, sometimes you'll find that when you actually take out the calipers and reverse them so that you get a perfect measurement, a lot of these knives have similar handle to blade ratios or or exactly the same handle to blade ratios but due to the shape of the handle or due to the blade of the shape uh due to the shape of the blade it doesn't look like it um uh for instance the patata has a really good handle to blade ratio but that that long slender tapering blade makes the blade look shorter so it doesn't necessarily translate visually so what i'm doing today is talking about handle the blade ratios to the eye. <gasps> Ooh. And, and so what I'm going to do is give you a reverse version of it. So, and let's keep in mind that most pivot assemblies, you know, to get to the pivot to the edge grind is usually an inch, it, you know, going from the center of the pivot uh, to the end of the handle. And then from the end of the handle to the plunge grind, usually there's an inch eaten up there. So it's never, you can never get it exact. You can never get a one-to-one -one handle to blade ratio. Here is an off uh, version of what I consider an awful uh, handle to blade ratio. And of, again, we're talking visually, uh, but that is the paramilitary two. 
a, a knife I love and hate. It's a frenemy knife, if you will. Um, that's that's how the kids, I think, referred to them maybe 15 years ago. But anyway, this thing is uh, a great, great knife. I mean, it's come out in a, in a, a million different iterations, uh, different handle colors, different blade steels. And why is that? Because it's an awesome knife. And a lot of people have them because a lot of people like to use them because it melts into your hand and it feels the ergonomics are, are, are you know, right up there with the very absolute best of them. But when you look at it, it looks like it's got a short blade, doesn't it? I mean, look at the size of the handle. Then look at the size of the blade. It looks like it's got a short handle uh, uh, or a short blade. And, you know, it kind of does. And this 50-50 choil in the center doesn't help the situation, the visual situation at all. So if you got rid of that, um, you know, things might things might change. You might be able to extend the blade, the point out a little bit further. It would still fit in the handle and then it would look like a good handle to blade ratio. Okay. You get what I'm saying. I just, uh, I just, just in case you're a new listener, a new viewer, this is an example of a knife that I think that though it is amazing and I have massive respect and love, uh, for this knife, you know, it's got a lousy handle to blade ratio. Okay. Let's start with a classic, a classic. You open this up and it looks serious, and part of that seriousness is the handle-to-blade ratio. This is the classic Buck 110. Let's look at this. Now, you look at this knife, and uh, you can see it right away. I can see it right away. And if you measure it, you can you can pretty much, you know, it's, you measure it, it, it starts to fall into line. You know, this is a 3.7-inch uh, blade. And you've got a, well, let's see, the one, two, three, four and three quarters inch. Uh, so there's an inch difference. And that's what, it, that's what it usually is, an inch difference in the handle. Just to go from the pivot to, you know, to there, you're, you're using up a lot of, you're using up an inch usually. Uh, but this Buck 110 to me has, is, is a classic with a great handle to blade ratio. Unlike its little brother, uh, to me, the, Buck 112, you're starting to get into paramilitary two uh, area now. Uh, that blade, even though uh, uh, even though the ratios are basically the same, that blade with its steeper clip, with the nail neck closer to the point, and uh, and well, it just it just makes the the handle the blade ratio a, a little wonky. So I think there's a golden sort of a golden mean. Uh, that you get when you approach four inches on a blade um, in terms of how it looks. Uh, you'll notice that also in, say, the uh, XM18 versus the XM24. The 18 has a three and a half inch blade. The 24 has a four inch blade. And the 24 is more graceful. It's, it's, it's doing the same amount across a, a greater span as opposed to trying to <laughs> jam in all these features into, into a smaller size thing. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm just going to say yes. It makes sense. So number one here, uh, and this is not in order, in any order. It's just an order. Uh, this is the Buck 110. Excellent blade to handle ratio. Next, one I don't talk about enough, but it's a Boker, and it comes from a designer that I, to me, he's, he's the tops, man. He's at the top of my list. Uh, I would love to own a custom folder by Charles Marlowe. And here it is. is this is the Marlowe designed Squale. Uh, now here is a case where you have the same thing, uh, pivot to blade uh, with its turning, you know, you're losing about an inch. You've got a, a, a blade that approaches four inches. It's, it's right at, it's, it's, well, I guess it is four inches and a handle that's almost five inches. Okay. So um, you have a standard sort of difference between the handle and the blade, but here you have a blade that is wide and with that recurve, it's a visual trick. So the recurve comes down and the blade gets real wide right around in here towards the tip. And th what does the handle do? The handle has a sort of corresponding swale here for your finger, for your group of fingers here, and it gets thinner. So it puts the visual weight towards the blade and it makes the blade look bigger than the handle. So it results in a really excellent looking 
blade to handle ratio. Um, and I mean, not for nothing, it, it is a good handle to blade ratio. When, I mean, if you measure it out and you actually look at it, it is. But I think part of what makes this so visually compelling to me is the fact that the why uh, is how the why the blade widens and the handle gets slender, kind of at the same spot. If you mirror it at the same spot, and so it makes this handle look smaller, makes the blade look larger. Am I nuts? Am I just? Am I? Is this? Okay, no, I'm not nuts. No, I, I'm. I know what I'm talking about, and I'm talking about my own crazy uh, peccadillos here. And to me, this one looks like it's got a great handle to blade ratio, and not to mention the fact that it has a bolster. And the bolster, this metal bolster, it's titanium, looks like a continuation of the blade. So it's a visual trick, and I don't think it was intentional, but it makes the blade look even larger. Right? It looks like it's all one. Okay, Boker Squale. Awesome knife by uh, an incredible designer. You got to give Charles Marlowe a follow on Instagram if you don't already, because he doesn't post too frequently, but he's like, uh, the, he, he seems to me to be kind of a reclusive guy um, who just, who just, you know, just kind of keeps going along making these incredible masterworks. Uh, plus his, uh, his Bally songs are really cool. And Bally songs, yeah, they got to be really cool to, to get my attention just because that's not my main thing. Next one, a classic, the Hinderer Subenza, Hinderer Subenza, <laughs> knife humor, the Chris Reeve Knives Subenza 21, and I, I think that all of the things I'm going to talk about follow onto the 31, and uh, we're there before the 21, but this knife uh, does a similar thing, a similar thing happens here as uh, happens with the squail, except on a more subtle uh, subtle line. The blade, when the blade is wider or looks wider than the handle, it's gonna make the blade look longer. And we get a little bit of that in this knife, but this knife just really actually maximizes the amount of handle that comes without ever, I mean, look at that. You, you would have to have very skinny thumbs to get any, uh, to get any, let me get some, find some white paper, to get any flesh down between those two scales to hit that tip. But it is coming right up to the line. I mean, that's what we know these knives for. That's what we know Chris Reeve knives for, like incredible tolerances. It's like what I was showing you with the Acta Non Verba. The blade comes so close to the end there, but without being accessible by thumb fat, that it's like, you know, it's perfect. And and, you know, this knife is known as kind of being a perfect folding knife. And they spent a lot of time, um, you know, dialing it in. Uh, but they did a great job. And now let's look again. Let's compare it to the also vaunted, uh, for a good reason, um, paramilitary too. Here, this is good. I have a little white canvas here. Look at these next to each other. So if you can't hear this, what you uh, what you would be seeing are handles that are the exact same length, but a blade that stops so short <laughs> in the uh, in the in the PM2. Plus, with that 50/50 choil there, you're losing about a half an inch of cutting edge. Uh, then again, you might say, well, here on the Sabenza, it's got a generous sharpening choil uh, that protrudes out in this direction, so you're not really. But when you look at the uh, when you measure the cutting edges, uh, you you have a lot less in the PM2, but the same handle length. So just just to show you, so there is a reason why these Chris Reeve knives are so are so well respected. And this is the only one I have. This is the only one I've ever had. This is the the one that was born on uh, quote unquote born on um, leap day of 2016. So it's only one year old, <laughs> one and a quarter year old, if you look at things that way. Uh, really like this. Always wanted to get a Tanto of the 21. Maybe I'll get a Tanto of the 31 or something, but they they managed to um, make the handle to blade ratio look even better with the Tanto because the Tanto's width remains wide from the um, from the Ricasso all the way to the tip. So again, it just makes the blade look larger and makes the handle sort of get in line. 
So there you go. A classic in the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza 21. Next up, a um, spiritual cousin, I'm going to call it, is the uh, Spartan Harzy Folder. The Spartan Harzy Folder, um, again, a, a terrifically robust knife with a similar construction. It's sort of like halfway between an XM18 and a Sabenza. To me, it's like the love child of the two. And, um, well, deserves that not only in, it deserves that uh, mm, descri descriptor, uh, not only for how it is and, and how it's built and how it's designed, but also just uh, the lineage, I think. You know, it, it comes to us through years of use and, uh, you know, and, and uh, expertise in, in Harzi and uh, in the guys at Spartan. And uh, of course, mine has the logo on it. But if you look at this knife, uh, you've got a series of choils here. You have these first two finger choils here, which thin out the handle. Uh, you've got a thumb ramp here, which makes the handle, uh, makes the blade at the Ricasso wide. Uh, so that's a good start. But again, this is another one of those knives that even though you're losing a full inch with the rotation, uh, talking about from the center of the pivot to the end of the handle scale, and then when you rotate it, you know, that's a half inch times two. That's a full inch. So the difference is there. But you'll find that when a handle here is designed where it comes back, you can pack a little bit more cutting edge in there. And we put this here. We take a look at it. And, uh, you know, you've got that same inch difference. And here, maybe if we can see it better. No. You've got that same inch difference between the handle and the blade, slightly less. Uh, but still, you get that visual um, handle-to-blade ratio that is very pleasing. So that is the uh, the Spartan Harzy folder. Just a great, great folder. If you can get your hands on one and have the means, I highly recommend them. Next, another one that I highly... These, these I, I highly recommend them all. I love them all, so I'm going to stop saying that. Uh, this is the Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. Now this knife, whoops, sorry, my left hand is uh, uh, not not what it's uh, not what it's been. Anyway, so here you go, another great handle to blade ratio. I think in this case, uh, what makes the blade look the same size as the handle has to do with right in here, in this uh, uh, choil area. You can kind of see it better from this side. And again, I'll bring in the white canvas to to illustrate, but this area that's cut out for the fingers that swoops in for the, uh, the front finger and the four, uh, the forefinger and the middle finger. And then you have this little area here. It's not really intended to be a choil, uh, but you can rest your hand right here, your finger right there. So this having this shape of the handle continue into the blade, this curve from the swale continue into the blade, into that, uh, sharpening uh, notch area. I think that's what makes this look like they're the same size. I mean, again, you've got that, the lost inch between the pivot and the, uh, and the plunge grind. And then you also have a, a blade that comes way to the end without being able to access it with your thumb fat. I mean, it's just really using every bit of space here. Um, every bit of space down at the bottom. Now at, for contrast, uh, let me show it with a knife that I absolutely love, but does not do that. This is the off-grid uh, XL Enforcer. And if you look at these two knives from this aspect, you'll see the TRM Atom. The blade comes all the way to the end of the scale. Whereas with this Enforcer, part of the Enforcer is that it's a tough, robust, robust knife. It's got a glass breaker on the end. Um, that glass breaker protrudes... Uh, almost a half inch so visually makes it look a lot makes the handle look a lot longer than it actually is uh, but also to back that glass breaker up and to keep this uh, a really robust tough knife especially down at the pommel if you're going to be using that as a smashing thing you need some weight there so there's a there's a big back spacer there and the blade stops and then the back spacer picks up and then that's about a three quarters of an inch there and then you add that almost half inch uh, on the end with the uh, glass breaker. And it really does 
it throws the the excellent blade to handle ratio of this knife just off plus it widens at the tail end and that also adds weight to weight and size to the visual weight and size to the handle well it also adds real weight and size um so the reason i'm showing this knife off is just to show that without the backspacer there and um I mean, you can do, you can have this kind of um, usage of the handle without, uh, with a backspacer, uh, if it's constructed correctly. But my point here is to show how, without that big backspacer at the end, uh, you can maximize how much blade goes into the handle, and then when it's open, it will have good handle to blade ratio. Oh my God, word salad! All right, I'm gonna put this down. I'm going to pick up probably, I think it's, I think it's probably what I consider the best here. And that is the Sinkovich designed ZT0452 CF. Uh, this thing, uh, S35VN, uh, it's one of the few carbon fiber handled knives in my, in my collection. Um, not crazy about it. Uh, crazy about the knife. I'd love it in my Carta, but I've just at this point, to be true to, to the design, haven't really sought, sought out any micarta for this. I'll just keep it. I don't carry this too much anyway. Uh, it's a big knife, uh, four and a quarter inches on that blade, and fits perfectly into this handle. Again, you have maximum use of that uh, handle size to fit maximum blade without being accessible to the thumb fat. And uh, when you look at this, the blade and the handle are kind of the same width. Of course, the blade tapers towards the tip and the handle flares towards the tip, but the flare has a dip. So it dips towards the pommel in the back uh, and it has a corresponding flare on the bottom side. So it maintains a sort of parallelness. And with that parallelness, that does not add weight. Whereas this, the departing lines of the pommel down here on the on the off grid add weight so this thing just just look at it it's it is nearly perfect and then i was talking before about the um this sort of handle construction where you where you um from the spine where your thumb rests and going down and then before the pivot just hooking back like this gives you all of this space here to deal with the malarkey that the blade has to have. It has to have that inch or it has to have that, that bit of space because you can't have the, the edge come all the way up to the pivot. But in this case, when you, when you design the handle to, to shy away from, uh, from the blade here down towards your forefinger, you can extend that cutting edge all the way to the handle. It, it comes all the, almost all the way to the pivot in this case. So that, that sort of handle construction uh, design here at the front and then here at the back really, really makes this uh, uh, just a maximum handle to blade ratio uh, knife. This is such an outstanding knife. Also, uh, if you've never had one or, you know, I think I'm, I'm going to go through a little, little renaissance of appreciation for this knife. That's the 452CF, 0452CF. CF, <laughs> jeez, from Zero Tolerance. Another one, uh, now this one has a backspacer, but still you're getting maximum, maximum blade inside that handle. And this is the Riot K2. This one just sounds nice too. I love the way this sounds. The Riot K2, that's an S35 VN blade. You've got a hollow ground main, comes to a very thin behind the edge measurement. And then you have uh, a flat portion there at the wedge there at the tip. Beautiful, um, almost blade length swedge, which is ordinarily a pet peeve of mine. I don't like a blade length swedge unless they do what Riot did here and then give you a little landing point for your thumb. I don't like my finger resting on a swedge. Um, but so really, really excellent. You've got milled out, pocketed out, lightened titanium slabs here. Great uh, flipping action and all the rest. Uh, but look at the look at the shape of the Tanto tip, and then let's look at how it corresponds to the shape of. So you got that tip, and then you've got the shape of the 
the uh, pommel here. And they're kind of the same shape in mirror, you know, just mirrored. And then, so that shape of the blade follows perfectly with the back shape of the handle. You can just see how it, you can see how it nestles in there. And then, then there's a, just a very small bit of backspacer behind it. So if there, you can, I guess with that backspacer, you can go even closer to the tip and uh, to the to the end, to the pommel of the handle without being able to get any of your fingers in there, that finger fat in there to snag. So who knows, man, maybe, maybe the backspacer is the way to go to maximize handle to blade ratio. Oh my gosh, have I stumbled upon something? All right, let's 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 open this thing up. Now let's just look at it. To me, this one, and, and I think it has to do with the, with the uh, corresponding curves of the pommel and the tip. To me, this looks one-to-one. -one. I, 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 you know, it really does look one-to-one -one, and I think, it's, I think it's a trick of the eye. Obviously, it's a trick of the eye. It has to be a trick of the eye uh, because this thing rotates out on a pivot that is part of the way on one side. So anyway, just a gorgeous knife, gorgeous knife with excellent blade to handle ratio. Put this one down. Next is also a flipper. This one is the Cristal Aurora from Russia and Ivan Braganetz and uh, Levan of the Knife Nuts podcast. Uh, I've been really, really digging this knife, um, especially for a titanium frame lock flipper, which I, I haven't been that much into recently. I'm more of a thumb study kind of guy. Uh, but this one, um, I, I have to believe that visually uh, lending to this amazing handle to blade ratio on this knife is uh, the opposing thin stripe on the handle and the opposing super wide fuller on the blade. Um, so this adds visual size and weight to the blade. And it is a pretty wide blade at this point here anyway at the pivot. And then the handle itself in profile slenders out. And then to put this slender milled pathway here, which by the way, I love the milling on this slender milled pathway. It's like, it's like jimping all over the thing. Like it gives you great, great gription there without, without being aggressive and obnoxious. So yeah, that, that big fat fuller on the big fat, on the big wide spear point blade, uh, when opposed to this thin race here, really pulls it together visually, makes the blade look larger, makes the handle look smaller. Uh, it does have, again, a backspacer, and it does maximize uh, the capacity of that handle. Such a great knife. I love this silly knife. I really, really like this thing a lot. And uh, uh, it does not have much weight to it. It's very thinly milled out. I... The action is just about my favorite. You know, it flips out with uh, with bearing action, you know, flips out, thumb studs greatly, wonderfully or whatever. Uh, but I love the way it comes in. It has a more hydraulic feel on the way in. Not sure how they did that. Not sure if that was intentional, but I absolutely love it. It doesn't fall back in. It doesn't drop back in. So the next one does drop back in and i love that too but this last one was the crystal aurora uh, designed by ivan braganetz and imported into the country by levon of the knife nuts podcast give him a follow on instagram uh, great collection great guy but also um offering awesome opportunities to get uh, russian knives that might be otherwise impossible or difficult to get next up is the synapse from Vero Engineering. This is a knife that I will carry on my person, uh, not as my main knife, most mostly. Uh, I'll carry this in my left pocket just for play, just to pull it out and fidget with it. Cause this thing, I mean, this thing is awesome. I, you know, a lot of new knives come out, a lot of new knife companies come out. Uh, and you know, the knife, world is self-policing and if it's crap and if the guy's a, a, a bullshit artist they'll get they'll be gotten rid of eventually um all of that being said you know all of these great awesome knives that come out it's like who knows where to turn <laughs> um you know my point is like um 
Oh, geez, I have two others here. Uh, no, my, my, my point is that a new knife comes out. You don't know. You don't know if it's going to be if it's going to be all of that. All I'm trying to say is the, these Vero engineering knives so live up to the hype. It's unreal. I, I have this. I was not planning on getting really ever, to be totally frank with you. I like Joseph and we had an awesome conversation, but I was never considering spending the money to get one of these until I picked one up at the at the Vero booth and I picked them all up and I was just, I was blown away. Cause you know, it just came as a surprise to me at how amazing these are. <laughs> Part of what really grabbed my eye, especially with the Synapse here, is it looks, again, it looks like a fixed blade. It almost looks like that handle is smaller than the blade. And I know I keep saying about all these, but uh, I guess that's the point of having a list. This thing just um, impresses me in every way. And like I said, good handle to blade ratio, a lot of it has to do with design and tricks of the eye. And not and when I say trick, I'm not even saying that that's necessarily intended. But here you have this big multi-finger, uh, finger swale here. And then you have a wide, broad, consistent blade with parallel lines uh, to nearly the tip. And that adds visual weight to the blade and takes visual weight away from this handle. And I think that's what does it. Besides having a backspacer and also maximizing uh, the, the capacity, length capacity of that blade, you still have like, it, it is that visual effect, I think. So Vero Synapse, if anyone is ever on the fence about these Vero knives, all I can say is, man, experience one on your own. I had a similar uh, experience at the Koenig booth, picked up the Arius, and I was like, oh, I get it. I didn't want to get it. I didn't want to get it. I didn't want there to be another $600 knife out there that I desired. Um, and, you know, I'm not crazy about the design of the, of the Arius, if I'm being 100% honest, but I picked it up and I was like, oh, my God. This is like a massage for the hand. It feels so good in hand, and the action was just outstanding. And like this knife that doesn't have a protruding flipper, but has just this little flipper here, their version that doesn't have the flipper of the Koenig also looks like it has a better handle-to-blade ratio. You don't have the uh, pectoral fin hanging down here showing, uh, showing a, a perpendicular indicator of where the blade stops and where the handle uh, ends. So I think that also has to do with that. A flipper tab uh, for good handle to blade ratio should be subtle uh, at least. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I I meant this to be 10, but it looks like I have two more. So uh, the next is the Civivi Asticus. Um, this was a gift from my awesome brother-in-law for Christmas 2019, I believe. And uh, man, uh, I, I'm not sure how they do it on this one. This also has a backspacer. Okay, now I'm now I'm starting to be convinced. The way to get the best handle to blade ratio is with a backspacer, because you can get the blade ridiculously close to the end of the pommel of the handle uh, without being able to cut yourself on on it with your thumb. So maybe knife makers, listen up, take heed, listen to me. Backspacer equals better handle handle to blade ratio. You heard it here first. What do you think? leave a comment let me know um so uh again you've got uh you've got the reverse curve of the handle and the curve of the blade um and just a uh i think this helps this long taper to the tip helps this thing uh maintain great handle to blade ratio Civivi, i love Civivi, man they, they do some impressive stuff uh, one that uh, we don't have graphics for, we don't have a lower third for, I, I, I guess I left it off my list. My counting, I was counting 10, but this one, here's a new a new guy on the block with awesome handle to blade ratio. And this is the Rockwall by Tactile Knives. And I was talking about the protruding flipper tab before. This is the exception. I think that the placement of this right directly below the pivot, like exactly directly below the pivot, or almost a little bit behind it, makes it, am I nuts here? Maybe I'm not seeing this right, but really makes this one look one-to-one. -one. I mean, obviously it isn't, it cannot be, it cannot function and as a folder and be one-to-one -one, uh, in terms of blade to handle ratio, but something about that, uh, that mesmerizing pivot with the concentric circles 
and uh, and the slightly aft placement of that flipper tab really gives it that one to one look. All right, so if you didn't think I was, uh, you know, totally aesthetically bound and superficial when it comes to knives before this episode, now you know. Now you know. Uh, looks really do mean a lot to me when it comes to these these knives that we collect. Um, and, you know, f whatever the reason is, w w you know, maybe you have the most hardcore job that uses knives all the time and you're just a user and this is all just frivolity. And I get that, but I'm sure you're not watching. <laughs> uh, so to those of us who, who are uh, paying attention uh, in this kind of way, what do you think of handle the blade ratio? Does it matter? Does it matter? Is this any less, any lesser a knife because uh, it looks a little off? I, I would say, of course not. But, but is it important to you? Handle the blade ratio. Let me know. I know it's a dorky question, but let me know. Uh, leave a comment below or call the listener line. Love to hear you on the listener line, 724-466-4487. And let me know about this handle to blade ratio issue. Is it an issue at all? Uh, if you ask me, I say, yes, it is. I devoted a uh, half hour of my time to bloviating as to why. So there you have it. Okay, be sure to join us for episode 251 of the Knife Junkie. Uh, well, this is 251. Be sure to uh, join us for our next episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, that's episode, of course, 252 with David Longworth of Longworth Knives. You also might know him as River Steel Knives, but I think he's changing it. This guy. Oh, my God. I So when I... Uh, when I talked to him, I was shocked to find out, well, just check it out. Check it out. I was shocked to find out how long he's been making knives. He makes these stupendously gorgeous and uh, and pretty innovative um, art folding knives, uh, but art folding knives that I would love to carry. Some art folding knives belong in a shadow box on the wall or in a cabinet. His if you can roll like that, they belong in your pocket, man. So beautiful knives uh, on episode 252, David Longworth. That's coming up on Sunday. And of course, tomorrow night, Thursday night, knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. We'll be giving away the Actinon Verba Z300 knife. Thank you, Dave, from This Old Sword Blade Reviews for donating this to the channel. Uh, so be sure to check us out there. If you want a chance to win that knife, go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Uh, to to join us and uh, and that's and that's how you get on the wheel of destiny. Um, all right, well there you have it for Jim working his magic behind the switcher. I am Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.